been years since I've been trying to make this video and now it finally feels like things are going back in my favor. I'm getting into the swing of things again, but unfortunately in about two weeks I'm going to have to have this major surgery on my hip and that's going to put me out of commission again for a little while, but I'll tell you more about that in an upcoming video. I'll tell you the whole details because that is a crazy story, but today we're going fly fishing from the surf. I've got a sage eight weight rod and I've got my fly line here which is tipped with some sinking line and this sinking line sinks at eight inches per second I believe. I have another one that sinks at three inches per second and another one that sinks at like several feet per second. So this is heavy and I'm going to get it down to the surf. We're going to try to catch our first surf perch on the fly rod. Oh gosh, there's so much to this fly fishing stuff. Where do I even begin? Well, I've got these flies. Let's start with that. I've got these flies and some are supposed to imitate sand crab. For example, this one here kind of looks like a sand crab. It's got the little legs. It's got a hook there, but it doesn't have the egg pattern. So I have a couple of these, some that look like this. Here's another one, for example. This one also does have a little egg. I kind of like the look of that. I might start with this little thing and that kind of looks like a soft shell sand crab. So we're going to tie those. Those are our baits. Those are our flies today. And now for our fly rod, we've got a nine foot eight weight and I'm going to tie this leader to my fly rod. I've got two choices today. I've got 16 pound seven foot leader. And I've also got 13 pound nine foot leader. I'm just going to go with a little bit heavier. It's a seven foot leader, so it's going to be a slightly easier to cast. And if I hook up on a big perch, I don't have to worry about it breaking off. So I'm not going to use a tippet. I'm just going straight to the leader. I probably lost a bunch of you guys already, but just using the terminology that everyone else uses. So if you want to follow this, just, just try to follow along and you might put the pieces of the puzzle together. Now this is the fly reel that's going on the rod. This one is really cool because you can just pop this thing out. Let's see if I could do that. This is a three inch per second line sink tip that floats, that sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And these surf perch are on the bottom most likely looking for sandworms, looking for sand crabs. So I want something that sinks faster than three inches per second. I want something that's just gonna go straight to the bottom. This one sinks at, I don't know, it says eight feet per second. I don't know if that's true or not because that's really fast, but all you have to do is just click it back on here in the middle. And now you're ready to go. I'm gonna be reeling in with my left hand. So I'll thread this on, I'll put my leader on, tie the fly on, and we're ready to cast. And we're all tied up, ready to cast, and there's a couple important things I wanna talk about before we do. But before we talk about those, I just wanna let you know that this is a completely custom size waterproof jacket that I'm working on. This is a sample, and it's got waterproof zippers, uh, microfiber lined pockets, it's really nice, but I think I'm gonna change the color to camo. I also got these beanies for these cold winter days, so warm, as well as these Fisherman's Life tree with bone caps. Now the important things I want to talk about. It always helps to have a basket when you're about to cast, especially in the surf, because most of the time you'll be stripping out line. If you're stripping out line, it's going to get all over the ground, it's going to get washed around in the surf, and it's going to get tangled in your legs. A basket allows you to strip into the basket, and then when you cast, it all just goes straight out of the basket, and then when you're ready to strip back in, you strip it into the basket and it just prevents so many tangles. Another thing, when I'm casting, I'm not going to be doing those crazy rolling casts, let it fly and then shoot it out. I'm going to be doing a back cast, forward, back, let it go out a little bit and then shoot it out like that. When you do that, it is important to have some sunglasses on. 
because when you're going with the back cast, that fly can go straight into your eye. And you don't want that to happen, do you? No, you don't. So a little bit of protection in your eye and that makes all the difference. So I think we're ready to catch some fish. Let's do it. I feel pretty confident today. I think we can do it. I hope I went over everything thoroughly enough. Let the action begin. Just to start off casting, I'm gonna strip out a little bit of line. I'm gonna get into position. Now this black area is the sink tip and the green area is probably floating, I think. But we're gonna keep it all in the basket for now. The thing to remember when you're casting a fly, fly rod is that there's no weight. You know that the fly is not doing any of the casting effort. It's all in the line. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. Well, let's just get this line out here first. We're gonna probably cast out about 20 feet. So, all right, now we're gonna strip it in. When we strip it in, we're just gonna hold it with one hand and we're gonna strip in like that. All right, let's get into position where I think the fish are. Right around these rocks, looks like a good place. Now I'm gonna strip in the line just to about the black. I'm gonna get out a little bit more line into my basket here. Couple casts, one, back. All right, if we can get all the line out, that's all we need to do. And I think I could cast even farther. So I'm getting out just as much line as I think I can comfortably cast. And then I gotta control it. And at the same time, I've gotta watch the waves because when the wave comes, there's a strong undertow and that could be dangerous, all right? That could mean disaster. Right there, boom, all right. Now let's get this in so we can cast. This is a good time to cast. The line, the water is up. If I can get this thing out, this might be a chance to get a fish here. All right, I think I got a good amount of line out. I just gotta be extra, extra careful. And I'm just gonna strip. I'm just gonna strip it in. See if I can get lucky here. See if I can trick a perch. There could be a fish here. Water is super clear, man. This would be a great time. This would be a, a great time to try, uh, what do you call it? Forgot what you call it. Underwater fishing. Just gotta find the fish here. Just find the fish. Hopefully they like this sand crab, this fake sand crab. Bring it in. Just staying in control. I'm getting it out far enough, I think. This is going, going well so far. Well, I'm gonna try this little sand crab for a while, and then I'm gonna switch it out to another color sand crab. And then I've got some other little things that have some orange on it, which more imitates a sand crab uh, egg. Woo, big wave, yeah. Yep, gotta be careful, man. These waves can sneak up on you. Well, we're just gonna pause for a second here, check out our line. No knots, which is great. Fly looks good, no threads have come loose. So I think we can continue for another five, 10 minutes here, and then we'll, we'll change base and move spots. Hopefully we can get lucky, but that right there is about the amount of line that I can comfortably cast. And all of that goes out of the bucket. Any more, and it's just getting in the way. It's just an obstruction. I moved down the beach a little bit. I'm gonna tie something else on. Now I'm not using a tippet. A tippet is an extra line that's lighter weight than your leader that you tie to the end of the leader. And people use tippets when they're going fly fishing because their leader is tapered. It's really thick near the main line and it thins out real thin towards the end and that allows the line to lay out flat. If it was all the same diameter, it would just curl up in a big ball. And you don't wanna keep cutting into your leader because the more you do, the more you'll get into that thicker part of the line. That's why people use a tippet. Now I'm not using the tippet, so I believe I've got about a foot and a half of thin line, which is 16 pound test. And you can just imagine when you go to the thicker part of the line, that's probably 30 to 40 pound test. So I'm gonna to try to cut as minimal as possible. And I might even not even, I might not even change this bait right here first. 
I'm just gonna try to keep casting this one for several times and try to preserve my leader as much as possible. Oh, I think I had one, dude. I may have just had a bite. All right, I might be in the right spot now. Oh, there's fish on, fish on, fish on. I got one, I got one, y'all. I got one. First perch on the fly rod, y'all. I got one, dude. Nice. Nice. Bro, let's go. Look, I got one, dude. Can you believe that? I freaking got one. It's a baby, but it bit on it. Let's go, man. Hey, first one, I'll take that. On the, on the fly, baby. First one, hell yeah. Get out of here, little guy. I found them, and look what they're biting on. Pretty much this. You see these sand crabs in here? These are all dead sand crabs. Same size as this. Didn't even have to cast out far, but found them. Found them. Now I have a little more confidence and I can tell you how we're casting, but I'm also targeting the high tide. This is still an hour before high tide and that's when you want to go for perch. A little bit before high tide. Chances are greater to catch perch going into the high tide. This is my line now. This is about as much line as I need out. It's about 20 feet. Make sure nothing is tangled. All right, now, and we get, get a little bit of line out, okay? Make sure there's no tangles. Make sure nobody's behind us. And we don't want to let all the line out first. We also want to let the waves come in so the water is deeper. Once it gets in, I pull it back, do a couple false casts, which means I don't cast it all the way. I see another wave coming in, so I'm gonna wait until that comes over me. And as the rod goes back, I let it load up before I pull it forward. So go back, load up, let go. All right, now I might have a little tangle here. Let's make sure we're good. Now strip it all in, and we'll do that again. All right, water's up, big waves coming. I'm gonna let this thing pass by, and cast right over it. And that right there should be deep enough where the fish are, because they are surf perch and they're feeding in the surf. And at the same time, I, I still, I want to keep tension, because if I do get a bite, I want to be able to set the hook. A lot of white water come in. Big wave come in, I'm gonna cast right over this wave. Boom, right there. All right, yeah. Now, should be able to get a fish right here. But there could even be fish all around me, like literally all around me right now. There's brown water, which could mean the fish are feeding. The brown water probably means there's a lot of sand crabs in there. Here's a little trick if you want to bring your fly line up real fast. Instead of just reeling, you can just, just hit it. Just hit your reel. It'll all spool up. Just make sure everything stays kind of neat. I probably lost a bunch of you guys already, but for those of you who are still sticking around, you might find this interesting. So when you're casting a fly rod, you don't have weights, no split shots. It's the line that's doing the casting for you. That's where the weight's coming from. And to be able to throw that line out, the rod needs to load up, as they say. So when you're doing the back cast, the line flies back, the rod bends like that, right? And then when it loads up, you cast it forward, and the rod bends again like that. 
here's a little explanation on how to get a little bit of extra cast. So when the rod loads up forward, it bends, right? Now see, if I pull the line, I'm not pulling the line, the rod back, but the rod bends. So as that line extends straight and loads the rod up into the bend, at the same moment, you can load it up again like that and then shoot it out like a slingshot. So the rod will load up, you double load it, double haul it, whatever you call that thing, where the rod bends more, and you can do the same thing on the back. So it's really, a mo it's like, it's, 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 it's the motion, you know, you cast it back to, and you pull, the, line, the rod bends, and then as it goes back, you let it go, and then it loads up again back there, you pull it again to load it up, and then when you cast out, you load it, you cast it. Ah, gosh, is that a good explanation? I hope you're following along. Anyway, that's just a way to load it up back and it's behind you. Now load it up again and uh, I guess I'm more of a demonstrator by action, not words. I'm gonna to try to catch one more. This has been a fun day. It's a lot of work. I might just stick with the Carolina rig, but while I'm out here, I might as well try to get another one.